Okay, hello and good evening everybody. Thank you for joining me tonight for our uh, awesome Zoom on um, boosting immunity using natural concepts and, and remedies and really just some easy and simple ways and things that, to be honest, you probably might already know, maybe you've forgotten, maybe you haven't heard of, but um, yeah, it's all just about keeping things super simple and doing them all the natural way. Oh, there we go, Tamara's joined us. Thanks, Tamara. Oh, we've got Bronnie, we'll pop you on mute. That's okay. Beautiful. Oh, there we go. Um, so yeah, it's all just about um, just some, some key little things that you can just do on a daily basis um, to help make sure that this winter season, I think most of you are coming in from Australia at the moment. Um, we do have Beck, I can see she's coming from Austria, so you're going the other way. But you know what, sometimes summertime is when it hits as well. So really these immunity tips are for all year round. And I think that's what I really want to be able to get across tonight, that these are things that you can be implementing in your day um, every day. Um, and it's about having a, a preventative approach, um, you know, when it comes to your health versus kind of that fix it um, system that we tend to go towards. So just a few house rules if you haven't been on one of my webinars before. If you can, just keep yourself on mute just so we can make sure the sound is clear. That would be amazing. Um, and if you do have any questions at all or you want to comment, guys, get as interactive as you want in the chat section. That's what it's all about. Um, so pop it in there and um, I'll, we'll try to definitely get in there in the end. Or if any of you attendees that are on would like to, you know, just interact in there in between, go for it. So beautiful. Okay. Okay, so um, my name is Carla Thomas, if you haven't joined me before. I am a holistic health coach. Um, I'm a whole food educator or whole food cheerleader, I like to say and play on that pun, being an ex-dancer. Um, I am also an expert with the Sarah Wilson uh, eight-week program, uh, I Quit Sugar uh, eight-week program, and I am the published author of a book called The Juicy Movement, and I'm also um, a speaker. So thank you for joining me. Um, tonight, as I said, it's all going to be about uh, boosting your immunity as a prevention versus a cure. So I want you to think back to um, when you were perhaps a young child and, you know, some of those things that your mum might have done for you when you were feeling ill. And, you know, thinking about how, why have we taken perhaps a step or a leap away from this? So, for example, um, I know that when I was ever feeling a bit unwell as a child, um, my mum would always give me hot teas, hot water with lemon and ginger, um, raw honey for my throat, different broths with lots of things like spring onion um, inside it. Um, there would be the, uh, the steamer with the, um, what was it, vapor up or peppermint, you know, all these types of things, um, you know, garlic um, and, and, and just little things like that that we can find at home already in our, in our kitchen, in our pantry. Um, because, you know, when we're like seven, eight, nine years old, we don't really march ourselves off to the chemist and go, give me everything you've got, give me the works. And yet we do that now. I think we've, we've kind of forgotten about some of those remedies that are, that are already on hand and are quite cost effective. So um, that was something for me, I know, that I really looked back and, and visited over the last, you know, nine or ten years that I had stepped away from myself throughout my, my, my teens and my early 20s. Um, so it's about, as I said, making these easy practices part of your everyday. Um, and also, like I said, it might well mean that right now, if you are, um, you know, buying or purchasing quite a lot of over-the-counter medication um, during the, the cold and flu season, you might be able to get less as a result because your immunity is in such a better place to begin with, but you're also looking, as I said, at things that are more cost effective and, and better for you from around um, the home place, which is fantastic. So um, let's crack into it. So to start, I'm going to say, let's look at our daily rituals. And you, you might be laughing or smirking if you know me already, because this is something that I harp on about all the time. Um, and I do know that, but they are so, so important because uh, they basically mean that you are looking after yourself uh, on your, your mind and body health um, on a daily basis. And I really, really, really want to get that um, through tonight. It's about daily basis and a daily practice for what we need to stay stronger from the inside out. So maybe take a moment now to think about what are you doing every day to look after yourself? 
And more than anything, are you actually doing anything in your day? Have maybe a bit of a think about that and, and just reflect for a moment. Um, because if you're not, that might well be your answer right there of why you're not quite feeling 100% or why you do find that you catch everything quite easily around you or you just expect that during the winter season you're, you're, you're going to get sick and run down. That's normal. And in fact, it isn't. If you have a healthy immune system, you, you should well be able to be around, you know, those types of bugs and, and not really pick it up. Or if you do not feel the effects um, so much. I, I know I can definitely speak for myself when I say that I, I really can to my heart, have not had a cold, a flu, a terribly sore throat, bug, anything in years. And if I do feel the niggle, I know exactly what I need to do and amp up, that it's gone straight away. Um, because no one likes to feel sick. It impacts everything about our, our lives. Um, so let's get started talking about water and drinking lots of water. Um, I still get relatively amazed when I come across clients who tell me they don't like water or they can go through an entire day not sipping a drop of water. Um, we are made primarily of water. Body, brain is 70% water around that mark. So we are like sponges. Our body wants this. Um, you know, our cells are primarily made of water. So we need to be hydrating. And I know that in the summer it can seem uh, easier to do because we're generally maybe sweating more, um, we're exercising more, you know, we're hot, etc. But it's super important to still be consuming enough water throughout the winter season as well. Um, it helps eliminate toxins from our body. Um, it helps, as I said, keep us um, hydrated. That helps our mind be at a better level, especially when we're around things such as heavy heating. Uh, we do want to make sure we don't get dehydrated. Does anyone ever feel when they're around that, that heavy, intense heating in a room after a while and your lips are dry and your body kind of feels like it dries up? Yeah. So it's really, really important um, to make sure you've got water um, with you all the time. And look, I'm with you. Sometimes plain water isn't cutting it. And that's why personally at the start of every day, I absolutely love to have um, uh, some freshly squeezed lemon in my water. Um, and throughout the day, I like to have some apple cider vinegar. Normally just a bit of a cap full. I mean, you can see my bottle right here about this size I've got my straw in there so if you are a bit funny and worried about having you know apple cider vinegar and lemon around your teeth and everything to be honest there's such a little amount of water it's okay but you can use a straw um, and I just keep that going and I quite like the the additional like flavor in there it makes it very easy to be able to down my water without a problem and that's my next trick I have a bottle with me everywhere and anyone who knows me will always see it in my bag I walk into restaurants and cafes with it. I walk into events with it. It's at my desk. It's in my bathroom when I have a shower. Like, it's almost an extension of myself. So if you have water with you, it's very hard to sort of forget that you, you need to have it because you'll get into that habit of just taking a sip every so often rather than going, oh, you know, shoot, I better down five, six, seven hundred mils quickly because I'll forget later. Um, so that's kind of my trick. And look, it took a little while, but it's just something now that I don't have to think twice about. And habits are like that. You know, initially it might take a little while to remember to do that. So always have water on hand with you. And if you're also just in that stage where you're really wanting to make sure you're getting that, you know, two to three litres in per day, Perhaps have a litre bottle and, and monitor it from the day going, okay, I finished that first slot, you know, so that you know you've actually hit the mark for the day. Um, that's just a really good trick too. Um, and switching off perhaps your second or third coffee of the day, maybe have a herbal tea instead. It's less of a diuretic, so it's just that bit better for you. Okay, so water. We all get the picture. Water's good for us. We're like plants. We thrive in it. We need it. So water yourself. Okay, give yourself an internal shower every single day. Your mind and body will love you. Um, exercising. Okay, so let's face it, if anyone just popped on, oh, that's right, I'll just mute you there, that's fine. Um, okay, so now that we're getting into the darker mornings and the cooler months, it can be a little bit harder to um, pull yourself out to the gym or get out for that early morning walk. Um, but look, sweating and giving um, you know your body that chance to release any toxins is so beneficial. Um, I can tell you now that, again, exercise is something that when you really learn to embrace it and love it and find things you like to do, 
it doesn't become a chore and it just becomes a non-negotiable in your day because you know how much better you function for it on all levels. But again, it's actually really good at boosting your immune system. And one of the things, unfortunately, we tend to do is think when we've got a bit of a niggle or we're sick is to just lie down and do nothing. Now, don't get me wrong. If you are, you know, temperatures going and you're really in a bad state and all the rest of it, fine. But most of the time, we're actually not too bad and we have a bit of a cold or a throat that we can't not do anything. And one of the best things you can do is actually get moving and have a bit of a light sweat. So maybe that means you're not going to run as hard. Well, you can still go for a walk. Um, maybe do some yoga. Do it in a warm room. One of my favorite things to do, it just lets everything come out. You know, if you want to clear your sinuses as such or sweat anything out of your pores, just fasten it. Um, you know, so there, there's some things you can do. Do some weights, but just don't push yourself, if that makes sense, if you don't feel like it. But it actually helps to get moving um, and it puts you in a better mental space um, as well. So I do encourage that. Um, one thing I'm going to keep for myself, um, twice a week I actually hop straight out of bed after five and take the dog for a walk by the river. Now, I challenged myself this year not to let the dark get in the way of me doing that and say, oh, I can't do those morning walks anymore. So I'm going to try and do it all through the winter. So far, it hasn't been too cold in the mornings. It's dark, but I actually really enjoy the peace and quiet. And if it's been a little chilly, I'll just put my beanie on. But I'm just going to absolutely rug up. I don't care if I put everything on in my wardrobe when I do it, but I'm going to keep to getting out there in the mornings because I actually think I'm going to feel better for it to start my day. So that's my little challenge. Maybe you want to set yourself a challenge to not let the, the cooler months get in the way of your exercise. Um, and look, it releases your endorphins, and that plays a huge part in we know when you're not feeling well, we, we tend to feel a little bit sorry for ourselves. So if you can up those endorphins, maybe get a sauna in there. You know, you can treat yourself to some self-care, but also be um, helping your health. If you can't get to a sauna, a bath is just as good at home. Um, and yeah, just another great way to, to, to release any toxins. So exercise, sleep. I mean, sleep is really the, it's, it's kind of the foundation of, of everything. We know how important sleep is. Um, we need to utilize that, that all important time, especially between 10 PM at night and 2 AM to get into that, that deep sleep and recuperate, um, our, our body, um, to let it to repair. Um, and especially when it comes to feeling unwell, that's why we're sleepy. Who here, when you feel a little bit unwell, needs to take a nap or you notice you need a bit more longer sleep. That's your body's innate way of saying, stop, rest. Let me just focus at getting you a hundred percent. And yet most of the time we push ourselves through when we're feeling unwell, don't we? And we actually just kind of inhibit um, being able to recover a lot quicker. So allow yourself to rest. If you do need a nap, it's okay. Um, recently in March, I had all four wisdom teeth taken out. Worst thing I've ever been through my life. I'm sorry if you haven't done it yet and you need to face it, but it was horrendous for me. And do you know what? I had to sleep longer in the mornings and I couldn't do as much through my day. And I needed to nap in the afternoons. And I was in bed for two weeks every night by 8, 8.30. I could not keep my eyes open. And I just had to learn, do you know what? That's my body just trying to recover. And it can only manage so much during the day. And it was challenging, but I, I had to listen. And when I didn't, I was feeling punished for it and I would end up in more pain. So I just wanted to share that to say, even the best of us like to learn the hard way, but your body's really smart and it's doing those things for you because it, it needs you to slow down. So try and get your sleep. Um, it's going to help you emotionally. It's going to help your immune system function better. And it's going to help you fight off bugs. Um, you know, and help prevent you getting sick or if you are already sick, it's going to help you recover a lot quicker. I'm just going to quickly refer to the chat section. Beck said, my challenge is to go for a walk after dinner every weeknight. I love that. It's such a simple thing to do. Maybe get your partner or a friend involved. But at the end of the day, what a great way to finish off your evening. That's the best time to do it for you. And, uh, well, we know it. Tamara slash Bronnie on there. Always listen to your body. Absolutely. Absolutely. I know that's a big one for you. So moving on, let's talk about diet. Who here really actually has made the connection between diet and immunity yet? Pop your hand if your screen's on. I'd love to hear. Or maybe just put a shout out in the chats. Yeah. I can tell you when, when I was younger, maybe this was just the way many of us were raised. 
it was never really understanding that what we put in our body might actually prevent us from getting sick or it might actually help in overcoming feeling run down. There might have been those slight little remedies, but the actual connection of really understanding why it's important to have those remedies wasn't really there. And it wasn't until I really began my holistic studies and really began to understand, you know, the first doctor of medicine, um, uh, Hippocrates, let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food, that that is actually the first place we should be going when it comes to enhancing our immune system. It's food. It's what we put in our body on an everyday basis and it's what we choose to put in our body, especially when we know that it's a bit under the weather um, and we're needing to, to fight that off. So um, I'm just going to pop all these windows down, sorry. So um, for me, it's whole food loading, and that is a daily thing I focus on. Um, every meal I have, and it's not where it's stringent and it's not enjoyable, but I choose to create my meals out of foods I know are fueling my brain and fueling my body so that I can run at optimal level. Because at the end of the day, we are a machine and we want to treat ourselves like a high-tech running machine. I don't want to be a broken down Datsun. Sorry if anyone owns a really old Datsun on this Zoom tonight. You know, I want to run like a Porsche and, and I don't want to have to worry about breaking down on the side of the road every, every time I hit, hit a bump or something, you know, comes across my way and, you know, I don't want to be rusting on the inside. So really look at yourself and go, what kind of car do you want to be if you could be and how do you want to run? And think about that when you're, you're choosing your meals every single day and the types of ingredients that you want to buy. And then if you do want to choose to supplement, and again, I am all for this, if you understand it as being a supplement to a good diet and not a replacement, then go for it. I recommend absolutely looking at a whole food-based um, supplement. For those who follow me or know me, you'll know that Juice Plus is the, the supplement I have taken uh, for myself for years now, over eight and a half years. And so I stand by it because I am a product of the product. I've taken it because it's been great for my health and I'll continue to. And that's exactly why, you know, I align and recommend it quite easily to, to anybody who asks me about what to take or any of my clients um, do. It's um, all made from fruits and vegetables. It's research-based and scientifically backed. There's a whole heap of other experts that align themselves and can back it up as well, which is really, really uh, important but most of all it's common sense to me um, at the end of the day we know that all those amazing vitamins and minerals and phytonutrients and, and enzymes and antioxidants that we need all come from produce like fruit and vegetables so if we're going to supplement we may as well go to the next best thing um, so that's how I see it and these are all things that when we do them and we implement them on a daily basis consistently it boosts our immune system so that it's so strong we can actually help avoid ourselves getting unwell in the first place. And that's really what you want to be able to do. Um, so, yeah, they're pretty much, um, you know, um, that's a big one for me. And that's why I want to extend on that a little bit while we're talking about diet. Here are some um, extra things that can help you. Um, their gut loving, their immune boosting goodness. And I really recommend, if you can, incorporating them into your life. For me, this took things and my health to another level. Um, and that's what I want to help you be able to do. So bone broth. Who's made bone broth or who has bone broth regularly? Anyone? Fantastic. Okay. Bone broth was something that, again, I guess I suppose I had as a child. If your mum made stocks and soups, but you just didn't look at it in that way. Um, but now it is something that's a staple, especially over the winter time. Um, I love it just to keep my gut healthy and clean to begin with, but I absolutely love to make sure that I'm adding that um, into any soups I make, um, you know, as part of stocks, if I'm doing slow cooks and, and stews and casseroles, you can, you can hide it in so many places. You can enjoy a cup of bone broth on its own. I actually really like that. Instead of having like a cup of miso soup, which can also be a great option, you can just have bone broth just in the middle of the day for something warm or have it on the side of your meal to warm you up. So I've actually got a bone broth recipe. Um, I'll show you if I can flick it through one here uh, in my book. So if you do have a copy of that, it actually shows you how you can make it. Um, and again, this is something that you make a big bulk of and then you can freeze it in batches whenever you want to use it, um, forever how you want to use it, which is really helpful as well. So bone broth, I absolutely love. And also too, if you need an emergency um, uh, 
stock of it and I'm exactly the same because you do want to um, cook it over 24 to 72 hours go to the shops, go to a good market, get a good quality one. It's okay. Sometimes I really just want it and I want it now, not in 24 hours. So I head off and go grab myself a batch as well. We're very lucky. There are a lot of places that do sell good quality now that you can head off to. So bone broth is a good one. Any types of fermented foods um, as well. Kefir uh, and kombucha and sauerkraut are my favorite. Fermented foods are so good for your gut and your gut holds 80% of your immune system. So much research is coming out to back that now. Gut health is a hot topic. Everyone's onto it. Um, and we understand, you know, your healthy bacteria is there. We've been hearing about probiotics for a long time. It's just that we've always turned to traditional probiotic supplements versus well, where can we get all these amazing pre and probiotic ingredients um, you know uh, from our actual food sources and so that's where fermented foods is really now kind of taken a shift and and become this thing everything everyone's embracing which I love so again I've got some recipes in here bear with me while I flick through uh, where are we okay so kefir there's a there's instructions there how to make it so inexpensive once you get hold of the grains you can just make it over and over at home and it's very very quick to do kombucha as well um i'm going to be honest i got really lazy with homemade kombucha um because again it was becoming so readily available and there were some really good brands and, and people i knew that were behind it that it was easy just to duck to the shops but i recently got inspired by another friend of mine who's got a bit of a scoby overrun kitchen at the moment and gave me some and I started making my own again because you know you can always you can control your own you know what you put in it you can play around with ingredients and, and flavors which is really fun um, but it's such a great compliment to, to any meal or just to have throughout the day and these are all things that uh, boost your immune system because it's really good bacteria in your gut that's what fights off any of the bad bugs so you want to be able to load up have enough there Help it stick to your um, your gut inside walls so that there's more of the good bacteria versus the bad bacteria. That's when it can fight it off and that's when a niggle doesn't turn into anything else further. So really, really encourage you to get into fermented foods. Um, spices. Who here loves spices in their foods? Raise your hand or pop in the comments. Yeah. How good is it when you've got something like a curry or a casserole or a stew or a soup and your whole kitchen in your house just gets overrun with all these amazing spices? Yeah, I love it. I think the thing is we tend to only look at using these spices when we're making those types of meals and dishes and not really looking at all the ways we can actually use them on a daily basis and hide them in, in variable ways that you might not think of. Um, so the, the spices that I love to go to um, and are very good anti-inflammatories, and again, this is why I say if you're having it every day consistently, you're contributing to building up the immune system, um, is ground cinnamon. I've grown, like these are some, um, some of these spices I've grown up with since I'm a kid. I'm so lucky. I've got a bit of a Middle Eastern Moroccan influence um, due to my grandma. So I, I always had these types of things. But ground cinnamon, um, not to be um, confused with um, cinnamon sugar. Don't want to go with that one. You want to ground cinnamon. Um, I use that basically in my fully charged coffee. Um, so it's a bulletproof paleo style um, in the mornings. There's a recipe for that in the book as well. I use it in my smoothies um, or if I'm having a shake on its own and I sprinkle it on my breakfast bowls or fruits. I can I sprinkle it on snacks sometimes if I'm having a banana or apple with some tahini. I try and put it everywhere basically. So there are all the sorts of ways I'll hide it. If you're making any healthy snacks like raw slices or balls, put some raw cinnamon, um, some ground cinnamon, sorry, in there. But that's a really simple way of getting eaten every day. The second one is turmeric. I'm a tiny bit obsessed with turmeric, ground turmeric, raw turmeric. Whether you want to put the actual root uh, in your juices, that's a great way of using it as well. It can get messy and that's why I have ground turmeric at home or I have um, turmeric latte blends because um, you can use that, you know, whether you want to make a turmeric latte or to add that into different um, ingredients and recipes as well. Um, but again, turmeric is something that we always had in our household. My mum used to make, I used to call it yellow rice because she always used turmeric when she cooked it. That's the, that's the only way I ever had rice as a kid. I didn't know what, what, 
white rice was. I always thought it was yellow. Um, I, I learned later on that was because the turmeric my mum used to put into it. Um, so turmeric, again, is something that I'm now using. Gold um, Brew is the blend that I love. There's also Ruby Chai, and I use their, um, uh, their turmeric latte blends uh, in my fully charged coffee. I put about a quarter in there um, to a half a teaspoon. It gives it a nice little goldeny color. I also put turmeric, ground turmeric, in my smoothies. Um, and again, if, I, if I'm on the run and I'm just making a shake with some, you know, uh, water or nut milk, I put it in there as well. I put it in my dressings for salad. Um, I put it in my meals. Um, I sprinkle it on for saying eggs and, and put it in there. Like really, ground turmeric is one of those things you can actually put on anything. And it is so, so good for you. I oil pull with coconut oil and a bit of turmeric now. Um, I was doing that during my wisdoms again because I was trying to do whatever I could to just put the inflammation down. So that is one um, I really um, do recommend you have at home. Ginger is another one, guys. Um, again, fresh ginger, always keep it in your fridge. You can use it in cooking. You can grate it into salads in different ways. I like to always put some fresh ginger again in my smoothies every single day. Um, and then have ground ginger as well because same thing goes. I can pop that in my fully charged coffees. I can put that into my smoothies. I can put it into my breakfast bowls. I can put it into raw snacks that you might make. So it's all just hidden ways that you can use it. If at night I want a little bit of kefir or yoga with some berries, I can put some ground cinnamon on top. All just sneaky ways, and it might take a little bit of time to get used to at first, but after a while, you don't think twice. You just start to add these into those types of snacks and meals that you make. Um, and paprika is another one. Obsessed with paprika. Um, again, grew up with this. I love to put it into um, uh, fried or scrambled eggs as a topping. That's what mum always did. So I'm kind of used to it. Um, you can mix it into different salads and sauces. I haven't put it in my smoothies, but I think it's because it's quite powerful and I'm not brave enough to add a little in there. Maybe a sprinkle wouldn't do much, but I tend to use it more in um, my, my meals and, and, and my hot um, foods. But I do love some paprika as well. Um, so they're my go-tos. They are always in my cupboard. They're amazing and they're delicious and they're so fragrant. So as I said, try them in your latte, sprinkle them um, the spices on top of your meals, um, you know, sprinkle them with yogurt, cinnamon, ginger, cook with them, get creative. And hey, I'd love to know if you create something new with it, share it with me. If I've helped you invent something new and you found something, share it, please. I'd love to know. Lucy said, I love paprika on homemade chips. Ah, oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Roasted chickpeas. Paprika or turmeric is another great one if you want to roast some chickpeas in the oven. It gives it a beautiful spice um, and a beautiful flavor. So, yes, great. Thank you for sharing that. I'm going to remember for the chips. Um, okay, garlic and ginger. These two probably deserve their own section um, because we know how amazing their immune boosting properties are. Now, here's the thing. If you're brave enough, if you feel you need a bit of a hit, go for just shoving a clove of garlic in your mouth. Um, your partner might not like it. I don't recommend doing it when you're going to be around people or in the workplace. Um, but in saying that, it's boom, powerful right there. Otherwise, use garlic in any um, broths and stews and sauces. Grate it into any of your dressings. I'm a big um, a believer in that. Again, my mum always put grated garlic in our salad dressings. Um, so that, that's another way to, to be able to hide it. If you find that it's something you really don't like or you're probably not getting enough of in your meals, um, then I do um, recommend garlic powder. Um, probably easier way to be able to hide that. Um, and also to, I mean, as a kid, mum used to give us garlic tablets. I'm not really a fan because, again, I just think if you can go straight to the food source, it's so much better. And you don't need a lot of it. You know, if you're getting garlic every couple of days on a regular basis, you're great. Just boost it up when uh, you're not feeling well. And a great way to do that is hiding it in your, your cooked meals, your slow-cooked meals, your soups, your broths, your casseroles, casseroles. It's very, very easy to do. Um, and then fresh ginger. Um, I didn't really grow up with fresh ginger in my house. It's something that I've, I've learnt to use because I've become, I'm a big fan of um, Japanese food 
an Asian style food. So I always keep some in there. As I said, I keep some uh, fresh ginger that I put into my smoothies. I like to grate it into my salad dressings as well. Um, and I like to use it into certain foods that require it for recipes. I like to use ginger when I make kombucha, a bit of lemon and ginger tea. That's a great one as well um, of getting it in there. I love myself some of that. Hot water in the winter time with a squeeze of lemon or lemon slices and some freshly ground ginger is amazing if you can keep sipping on that. So there, there too, I do recommend having both um, the ground form and the fresh form in your fridge. Because raw is always better. Um, so that's kind of when it comes to the immune boosting prevention part. I told you, how straightforward is that? Is anyone going, oh, I know all these things. I've heard of those. I could do that. Yeah. It's kind of the point. It's not really rocket science. It's just that it tends to be the last place we're going to these days or we don't think of. Um, but here are some natural remedies that I also did want uh, to be able to share with you tonight. If you do find that a niggle, a sore throat or a cold or a flu um, does develop in any way. So I've already spoken about water. Here it is again. It's your first point of call. Quite often when we're feeling a bit um, heavy headed, um, especially if you feel like we have a bit of a, a cold brewing here, go for your water first. Honestly, just up the water even more. Um, it very much when we're tired, sometimes it's not even that we're run down. We might just have a headache or a migraine. It can just be that you're dehydrated, especially, again, if you're around air conditioning all day long or the opposite, you're around strong heating all day long. So really just up the water and see how you feel with that first. Most of the time we tend to go for a Panadol. The Panadol is not what's actually going to help you. It's just the water. So just take the water and save yourself the time. Um, get steamy. Ooh, there's many ways we can get steamy. We'll start with the PG rated ones. Um, so uh, this is so good for getting rid of blocked nose and blocked airways. Okay, so hot shower. I know we're supposed to save water, but stay in there a little bit longer. Get it really hot. Has anyone ever done that? Especially girls we've got on here. When you need to wash your hair and you tend to get it steamy and you notice that you're blowing your nose that little bit more because it's all coming out. Yep, that's great. Better out than in, I say. Um, hot baths are great. Steam rooms are great. Saunas are great. My favourite, I'm a big um, power vinyasa in a warm room, hot room fan. So I tend to find, especially after flying, it's not so much I get sick, but being in that air conditioning, I always end up with stuffy sinuses from the cold in there. So one of the best things I can do is, is take a hot yoga class and I generally find in the next day or so, uh, everything's gone out of me because you're fastening the process. No one wants to feel like that. It's awful when you sleep. It's awful when you sleep next to someone with a blocked nose. Can anyone relate to that? Terrible. Terrible, disrupt your sleep. They're in the other room. Um, so get steamy. Again, that's why getting a bit of a workout is good. However you want to do that, whether that's, you know, the PG-rated way, whether that's the um, adult, adulterated version, just get hot and steamy. That's my advice. Um, hot lemon and honey for sore throats. I already mentioned that you do want to use good quality raw honey. Don't need a lot of it. Um, a lot of people ask me, you know, when I say, oh, but you shouldn't have honey because rice malt syrup is better for you. Look, as a sweetener in general, it is because it's fructose free. But when you're actually looking at using it for your health, well, it's the raw honey that has the antibacterial qualities. So that's what you want to be looking at when you're, you're going to use it for, for that reason. So you can add it in or just leave it out. Hot um, lemon, uh, hot water, sorry, with some lemon in it. Um, and then as I said, if you want to add some uh, fresh ginger in it as well, it's absolutely great to sip on and it helps the throat. Cold pressed juice. Um, I have a few recipes in the book as well, but um, those who work with me um, and have access to my GC Life program, there's an ebook in there we actually have with uh, Liam O'Neill, who's the founder of Refreshed Juices in Perth. And that actually goes extensively into why cold pressed juicing, as well as having ways you can cold pressed juice at home um, and discounts uh, into uh, his juices, should you want to order a juice cleanse with him. I'm actually about to get a delivery this evening for tomorrow. So that's just a great way of amping things up and getting high level antioxidants in you even if it's just for a day you can do it purely with the juices you can do it in and around healthy clean eating and around some soups and things coming into the winter time like now I'll actually be using it around 
hot teas, some hot broths, etc., to make sure I'm, I'm, I'm getting that warmth in me at the same time. And I'll be having my juices at room temperature versus fridge temperature um, to make sure I'm keeping myself warm. But that can definitely be a great way as long as it's cold pressed and as long as they're balanced and they've got more veg versus fruit. I'm big on that. Um, it, you know, we don't need a lot of fruit. We can get most of what we need out of our vegetables anyway. So I do recommend um, doing a juice cleanse. It can just be great to also rest your digestive system. Um, and just a little take on that. Do you ever remember, because I, I was taught this way too, that when you were unwell, you were told you need to eat, you need to eat, you need to have food, you need to up your immune system, you need to eat more. But you weren't hungry. The last thing you felt like doing was eating. That's your body going, stop. I don't need food. I don't need more stress on my digestive system. I need to be able to rest and put all my energy into getting rid of whatever's toxic inside you and helping you feel better. So there's a reason we lose our appetite generally when we're not feeling that well. Um, and your body heats up, same thing. Your body's doing that because it wants to kill the bugs that are within you and, and help you um, basically recover a lot quicker. So Juice cleansing or using broths can be a really good way of making sure you're still getting those antioxidants in you, but you're not actually putting any stress on your digestive system, yeah? So that's just another big one there. So if you don't feel hungry, don't force it. Just go with your body, listen to it, and just try and flood it with um, easy access antioxidants. And again, that's where something like uh, a good supplement that I use like Juice Plus can come in because you're able to just pump your body with those goods straight away and it can absorb all of those nutrients, antioxidants it needs. So just again, amp up on all of the above, hydration, sleep and nutrition. These are the top of your priority list. I'm going to say it again. Hydration, sleep, nutrition. Okay. This is what's going to give your immune system that extra kick it needs to thrive and be able to do its job. So as I said, drink your hot water with lemon and ginger tea continuously. Um, do it in the winter whether you're sick or not. Opt to go for whole foods with whatever you make. Think about what you're putting in your body because it's either allowing you to thrive or just survive, okay? Um, it's also going to boost your immune system and not necessarily just have to wait till you have to fix it, all right? And then use a good quality supplement in between if need be. Double up too. Um, get all of those free radical fighting enzymes into your body as quickly and as efficiently as possible. So there you have it. They are my big, crazy, all brand new, um, you know, life-changing, uh, immune-boosting tips. How simple was that? That's it. That's what I do. And honestly, if you can learn to implement these and practice them consistently, then you go from fix to prevent. It may take a little bit of time to get your immune system there, but once it's really strong, while others around you can get struck down by someone coughing on them, a kid touching them with a dirty hand, you will actually find you can be around that and not be affected. It takes time to build, but it's so, so worth it. Um, and, you know, it, it saves you having to, to, to be, you know, trying to get, you know, sick days off school, trying to worry about looking after the kids when you're not feeling well trying to be productive, um, you know, at, at your job, whatever it may be, um, and just life. You want to be able to enjoy life and feel well. So they're my tips for the uh, winter season. Um, but uh, do we have any questions in here at all? Beck said, I love it. Much less daunting than all the other things you hear about, strengthening your immune system. Absolutely, guys, we have to eat, right? So we may as well make what we eat worthwhile and benefit our immune system at the same time. Bronze written great information, really enjoyed it. Thank you very much. Um, yep, love the idea of turmeric on rice. I'm, I'm eager to try these homemade chips with paprika on them. That sounds absolutely delicious. Karina said, after years of finally, um, of trying, I finally got my husband on kombucha. Yay! And my daughter loves it too. And turmeric lattes. Yes, I do see you post about those all the time, which is awesome. Um, Beck's mum is now the kombucha master maker, which is really, really good. And that's what I love. When you do this, all of a sudden other people go, oh, what is that? How come you're feeling good? What are you doing? What are you taking? What are you making? It's great. Um, so thank you so much for your feedback. Exactly. Karina said, the way nature intended. 
And I think that's really big. We can just go back to, to, to what nature's already laid out on the table for us. So if that's it, I think we're pretty much going to be done with tonight. Um, if you have any other questions that do pop up, please feel free to contact me. All you need to do is send me a message through one of my social media um, pages, be that Instagram or Facebook, or head on to my website, www.carlathomas.com.au and click me a message via the contact section. Um, if you want to know more about these immune boosting tips and ways, um, feel free to hop on and grab a copy of my book, The Juicy Movement. Uh, I have a list of stockers on my website, but also you can order a copy online too. There's a shop there. Um, if you'd like to know more about um, the Juicy Life program, uh, which all my clients are privy to, again, flick me um, a message. I'd be more than happy to share uh, a bit of information around it um, and, you know, what's involved and all the different ebooks around that. Um, if you would like to know about other types of superfoods um, I use, so, you know, what turmeric blend I was mentioning today um, that you're not sure about, supplements, etc. Again, just reach out to me. I'm more than happy to share any information I have so that you can feel empowered to, to make a decision and, 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 you know, really put a plan into, into place to make sure that this winter uh, you're staying strong throughout that season. Um, but tonight has been recorded. So for anyone that couldn't join us live, this is going to be up and available permanently on my website under the webinar section. So you can go back and have another listen if you want to take more notes maybe share it with someone that you know has popped into your head tonight that you feel would love this um, and would be able to take a lot out of it. Um, but other than that, I want to thank everybody for joining me. Did we all learn something new tonight? Yes, beautiful. That's the whole aim. So start small with one step. Even if you decide once you get off this tonight that you're going to make that, that hot water with lemon and ginger or you're going to go add some ground turmeric to something, just Go and do it and start with baby steps and eventually you'll know no different. And it's all these things that are going to be able to contribute to making sure that you've got a healthy immune system the natural way. That's it from me. Thank you, everybody. Um, I really respect you um, giving me your time tonight and it's been a joy to be able to share with you. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your Wednesday evening and I look forward to hopefully seeing you on next month's webinar. Keep an eye out for that one. See you guys.